NVIDIA just dropped its own driver level frame generation. This is similar to AMD's AFMF and uh, you know, also kind of like other third party frame generation technologies that you can apply to any game like lossless scaling. So let's go ahead and try it out. So why are we testing this out in Elden Ring? I think this is a perfect candidate for the kind of game where this might make sense because no matter how powerful your PC is, we are locked to 60 frames per second. There is no way to remove the frame rate cap in the graphics settings uh, other than actually getting into modding the game. But I'm on a 240 hertz display. My GPU is practically asleep here. What do I do? Uh, well, again, we could try to kick on smooth motion frames, but there's a couple of issues. First of all, you have to go to the NVIDIA app, make sure you have the latest version. You go to graphics, you click on the game you want from the list, you scroll down to smooth motion and you turn it on, but you have to have an RTX 50 series GPU for this to work. NVIDIA has promised to DSO gaming that they are working on 40 series support, but I haven't heard anything about uh, 20 or 30 series cards. And again, right now it's 50 series only. Ah, that's kind of disappointing. But anyway, also when I first kicked it on, I was like, wait a minute, it doesn't seem to be working. What is going on here? Uh, I was like, well, frame view usually picks up generated frames and I'm not seeing anything. I'm not noticing anything smoother in person. And one reason we're filming the screen directly is so I can look at my monitors on screen display, which I couldn't capture with any kind of like uh, game capture, uh, you know, directly on the GPU or anything like that, because we're still at 60 Hertz. So at first I was like, wait, is this broken? And then I tried, oh, what if I have to restart the game? So let's go ahead and restart the game. Okay, we've now restarted the game and I notice a few things. Number one, frame view is detecting the 120 FPS. And by the way, not every frame rate counter will detect these type of generated frames. Hey, sounds like my kids' chicken nuggets are done in the toaster oven. Anyway, <laughs> not every kind of uh, frame, uh, frame rate counter will detect these. That's another reason again why I'm filming the screen directly. Now I can check that my on-screen display uh, for my monitor is detecting a higher refresh rate now. So this does all seem to be working, plus I can visually see more motion fluidity. Uh, also, I see a few artifacts. So let's bring that up as well. So frame generation isn't perfect. Uh, look at the, uh, uh, the like uh, compass, I guess that would be, but HUD elements. You can see that it kind of glitches around a bit in, in movement. Also look around the edges of the character and the sword uh, when I spin. You can see that there's some kind of garbling there and everything like that, so it's not perfect. That being said, if I'm not specifically looking for it and I'm just running around, I do get more motion fluidity. So whether or not driver level frame generation makes sense is gonna kind of depend on your own A-B testing in different games. I think in, some people are gonna be more sensitive to the artifacts. Uh, other people will in, in, appreciate the motion fluidity more than they dislike any artifacts that uh, come up. But keep in mind that a game that has frame generation integrated into it natively will give a better experience because the frame generation algorithm would have more access to game data, like motion vectors, what is a HUD element and what isn't. But I will say that the overall quality of this looks pretty good, especially uh, for what it is, which is a driver level frame generation. Now, I would love to quickly A-B test this to get an idea of, mm, do I prefer this on or off like I could with something like lossless scaling, more on that in a minute. Uh, but again, if I wanna turn this off, I turn it off in the settings, but it is still applied in the game until I actually restart the game one more time. So let me restart the game one more time to turn it off, and then let's compare it to lossless scaling. Okay, it is once again off. I Really the most annoying thing about this, besides the 50 series exclusivity, is having to turn it on and off again, uh, the whole game on and off again to kind of get a comparison. I can see here with it off that there is still a little weirdness around the edges of the character just due to, I, I think like TAA stuff. Uh, but it is definitely uh, more cohesive without frame gen on than with it on. And again, when we look at the uh, HUD elements up there and things like that, they're more cohesive. So there's definitely a cost uh, to, uh, to using it, but its image quality was fairly good. How about we compare it against similar stuff and or what if you don't have a 50 series GPU? Uh, well, Lossless Scaling is a fairly inexpensive app, and we, uh, with Lossless Scaling, we can then apply uh, frame generation to pretty much any game. 
So how are we going to do that? And why is my uh, scaling stuff not actually popping up there? Let's, let's reopen the app. <laughs> there we go, frame generation. I must have it minimized or something. Okay, so frame generation in this app has been updated several times. We're on the 3.0 model. And one thing that's interesting here is not only can we do a times two mode where there's one intermediate frame between two rendered frames like the driver level frame gen uh, from smooth motion and AFMF from AMD's driver side stuff, but we can also go into times three, times four, but even go into custom options where you can go all the way up to times 20, which is insane. There's no reason to generate frames above your monitor's max refresh rate. And the lower base frame rate you begin at, the worse quality the frame generation is. So I really don't see what those super high modes are gonna be particularly useful for. Let's start out with the times two mode uh, to kind of directly compare to smooth motion. So we'll notice a little countdown starts. And if I scroll side by side, I will instantly notice when it kicks in. Uh, because the overall smoothness of my camera pan increases, although are you going to see this on YouTube? You're on a 60 hertz video, I'm showing 120 hertz. Um, so no, you're not really going to see exactly what this looks like. I can film it at 120 uh, FPS and then maybe slow it down, but it's still not going to be perfect. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I feel like there's more uh, garbly stuff. Uh, let me do a, a quick camera pan. I think there's a little more garbly stuff around the edges with lossless scaling than there was with, um, with smooth motion. So I actually do think the quality is a little higher with smooth motion, but it's fairly close. Uh, again, I, I, I'm getting uh, some issues with the HUD elements. And once again, I think it's a little bit more uh, with lossless scaling than it was with smooth motion. So in general, um, I think these are fairly comparable, but at least based on this one game, and I have played this a bit off camera and everything, uh, I do feel like it's slightly better quality with the driver level smooth motion than I'm getting from this, but neither of them is perfect, and they do a similar thing. Uh, again, we are getting the frame generation uh, working out here. The uh, display is detecting it as well, and all of that. However, again, this is able to go into more uh, aggressive modes, so maybe we could try that out. I am on a 240 hertz display, uh, so how about we try out going into times four mode to get uh, 60 up to 240. Now, is it gonna kick in? Well, yes, yes it does right there. Uh, and notice that we're also getting a bunch more garbly weirdness around the edges of the character. So uh, with the higher frame generation modes, even times four, let alone times 20, I'm definitely seeing additionally uh, more noticeable stuff. Like I, I wouldn't use this. In the times two mode, I felt like the stuff around the edges of the character was probably gonna be passable for a lot of people, even if I didn't like it personally. Uh, but in this mode, I think that's just extremely distracting. So I wouldn't say at least in this game, the additional, um, uh, multiples are particularly useful uh, from what I consider to be visually acceptable, but I, I imagine there are going to be some games where maybe that uh, that wouldn't necessarily be as, as bad. Uh, but it is nice to at least have the option, whereas currently you don't on the smooth motion. However, I'm going to show you guys another uh, issue that I have with smooth motion, which is game support. Smooth motion is not working in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm only at 120 and this game is capped to 120. Uh, this is a frustration I have with this game, which is it forces a frame rate cap unless you mod it. You can at least go up to 120, unlike in Elden Ring, but 120 is the maximum, despite the fact that I have a GPU that could go higher and I have a display that could go higher. Uh, this is frustrating. And again, uh, smooth motion is actually turned on right now. Although here's what I had to do. So this is one of the issues because you activate it through your NVIDIA app. If the NVIDIA app doesn't detect the program, uh, how do you turn it on? Well, it wasn't detecting the program and I, I, I tried the whole uh, refresh button where it scans for programs. It did not find any new programs. So Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, I actually went in to add a program manually, found the file, clicked on the EXE, which as far as I know is how you're supposed to do this. Uh, then it does show up here at least, and I was able to kick smooth motion on, but no matter how many times I restart the game and whatnot, 
I don't see any visual difference. Frame view doesn't see any visual, uh, any frame rate difference. And the most important one, my monitor itself is not noticing any additional frames. Whereas something like lossless scaling, which I can just apply to uh, any uh, window, <laughs> pretty much, I just, okay, kick it on. Here we go. And there it is, 240 hertz from 120. And with the higher baseline, I feel like there's less visual artifacting, which is kind of nice. Uh, and again, it gives my GPU something to do, uh, which uh, the game itself couldn't because of that arbitrary, uh, just you can't go past 120 sort of frame rate cap business. And again, there's still a little bit of weirdness around the character edges and things, but it's, it's uh, not bad. Uh, it doesn't solve some of the frame pacing issues in this game, but that's a whole other topic. So what are my overall thoughts on smooth motion? First of all, um, I, I prefer with lossless scaling that I can just turn it on and off in game uh, without issue. With the NVIDIA version uh, at the driver level, having to restart the game is frustrating, plus the fact that apparently, as far as I can tell, the reason this one isn't working is because it didn't find the game directly through the NVIDIA app. That just seems a bit frustrating and is going to reduce the compatibility uh, of which games you can use it on. Plus, the 50 series exclusivity is kind of annoying. That being said, compared to lossless scaling, uh, I did feel like the smooth motion had slightly less visual artifacting uh, in its time when, when comparing the times two modes directly uh, in Elden Ring. So I do think its quality is good for what it is. Uh, but that being said, it's uh, never going to be perfect because it is driver level frame gen. Remember, if a game doesn't have frame gen built in directly, it can't tell the frame gen what is a HUD element, what is not, uh, any of that kind of stuff, uh, motion vectors, all of that. So really, I find the use cases for this kind of thing a little bit limited personally. Uh, and I think I'm more sensitive to the visual artifacts that it causes than the average person. So I think the best thing to say is if you have a compatible NVIDIA GPU, which isn't a lot of people right now, uh, you might want to go ahead and try this out. Um, and see what you think, because I think it's gonna be a very subjective experience person by person, similar to what I think about lossless scaling. For me personally, I'm often not going to use this because I find the slight bits of uh, artifacting on my HUD elements and things on the, like that extremely distracting personally. However, with how many people I see online absolutely loving this, I think that this is gonna be a very personal choice on whether you prefer the fluidity to the artifacts. Um, in general, in-game frame generation, that's uh, 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 is a whole different beast because it has access to a lot more information, and I find that to often be a lot more acceptable than what we get out of these um, kind of over-the-top, uh, you know, driver level or third-party forcing frame gen type things like AFMF, lossless scaling, and now NVIDIA's smooth motion. I think it's good that NVIDIA is adding it in uh, since that was a feature that AMD did beat them to, uh, and now they have a compatible feature. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and have an excellent day.